Science. Billions of tablets are popped each year to control pain, but scientists say their research is beginning to show there aren't many effective treatments for chronic pain relief. The results of new techniques and treatments from research institutions across Britain are now being explored at an exhibition dedicated to pain at London's Science Museum. A bite from a hairy beast might give you a shock, possibly cause itching and swelling and of course pain, but venom from creatures like tarantulas and snakes could also hold the key to potential pain relief. Venoms actually can activate and control the genes that control pain better than uh, modern medicines can. Uh, and that's why they're looking into the tarantula venoms. Um, and there's a venom in particular that acts uh, on a similar gene that if people have a mutation in that gene they can't feel pain. There is a tarantula venom that will block that gene in healthy people that do have the gene. And the hope is that that can actually switch off their pain. Scientists across the world are looking for ways to create this mutation, but pain is more than a simple physical response. What makes each of us unique means we also respond differently. Sophisticated scanning techniques have opened up the way pain links our brains to our bodies. Scientists at Oxford University are looking at what happens to our brains when pain is inflicted. It's surprisingly effective. And um, while, while they were playing the music, they asked me to read statements about myself, such as I am worthless and things like that. So, um, in effect, inducing depression or, or like something akin to depression. And then, um, as if that wasn't bad enough, they started burning me. Researcher Melvin Mezuz volunteered himself for the university's investigation. In terms of chronic pain, there are actually very few pharmacological treatments out there. And the most effective treatment, which would probably be a drug um, called gabapentin, not only does it have quite a lot of side effects, um, it, it was actually dis discovered by accident for pain because it was discovered for epilepsy and we, we accidentally found out it works in pain. And it's, in the way in which it works is not very clear at the moment either. So uh, we, we, don't have, we haven't really had a, a drug which has moved from a preclinical stage and we understand its mechanics completely and then translated that to humans. Peter King knows about chronic pain. 20 years ago, an injury forced him to amputate an arm already withered by childhood polio. King experiences phantom limb pain and is part of a trial at Manchester University using virtual reality to tackle the condition. He's been pleasantly surprised by the results. My fingers, the swelling in my fingers will go down. The burning won't be there. And it's the burning that causes most of the uh, discomfort. The burning won't be there, and the, the electrical current isn't hitting my arm as much uh, as it was before. So it allows me the freedom uh, to do, to live quite a normal life. It may be the case that some people don't feel pain because of a genetic mutation which blocks signals between the body and the brain. Stephen Pete has a mutation which means he feels no pain whatsoever. The fact that this specific genetic mutation could be used to help people who are in extreme cases of pain is quite exciting. A team at the University of Cambridge Institute for Medical Research is investigating whether this condition holds the key to pain relief without the side effects of drugs like opiates. The British researchers have discovered children and families who had congenital insensitivity to pain all had the mutation.